please tell me I'm not alone in this. If Delta offered you $10,000 in cash to give up your seat and take the next flight, would you take that deal? It was only an hour long flight and the new flight departed just 20 minutes later. It also wasn't a BS flight credit, but actual cash via Apple Pay. Though some passengers got up and took the money immediately, it took a second announcement of $10,000 in 20 minutes in order to find enough people. I'm a bit late on this, but I was discussing it over the weekend, and I think I would snap call. Outside of a medical emergency, I don't think I would not take $10,000 and then just go out and have a burger or something. Hey guys, Sebastian from Ask Sebi. Today we're going to do a roundup of Chase news and updates that you need to know about this week. Towards the end, we'll talk about why I think Chase is launching one new card later this year, and it's probably going to be a pretty expensive one. Big favor before we dive into all of this is to give this a thumbs up to help with the algorithm, given the niche that we're in, and if you are someone that's new here, consider subscribing. All right, starting with the big first story, Chase is extending the categories for Pay Yourself Back until September 30th. As a background, Pay Yourself Back is one of the reasons and sweet spots for the Chase Sapphire Preferred and Reserve, given that you can get extended value or elevated value for a lot of normal everyday categories. With the Sapphire Preferred, you're normally locked in the 1.25 cents per point. When you book travel and with the Reserve, it's 1.5 cents per point. This means that 50,000 points is worth 625 or 750. This is in stark contrast of other issuers where you generally need to transfer your points out to partners to book first in business to get that elevated value. Chase ended up introducing Pay Yourself Back in 2020 when everything was going on and people weren't traveling as much. They've kept it since then and my understanding is that it's something that's sticking around. That means until September 30th with the CSR, you're getting that 1.5 cents per point for dining, the annual fee, and also Airbnbs. For the Sapphire Preferred, the CSP, it's only 1.25 cents per point, and it's only for Airbnbs, but the dates are the same. I generally prefer hotels over Airbnbs given the experience and kind of the fees involved too, surprisingly, but it totally makes sense for families and larger groups. If I had three or four little subbies running around or something, then I probably would do an Airbnb as well. On a side note, I'm kind of curious what you guys prefer. Let me know down below. I think the fact that I generally take shorter trips as well probably ties into this preference. Reminder that pay yourself back involves putting the charge on the card and you pretty much pay yourself back using your points and you see a credit for that charge. It's a no brainer to me, especially if you don't want to plan trips and you maybe aren't even traveling in the short term. If you're only booking travel via the portal anyways, you might as well lock that value in for normal stuff. The only exception would be aspirational travel, but not everyone's looking to go to the Bora Boras, Maldives and seashells of the world. With the Inc. Preferred card, it's that 1.25 cents per point, same exact dates, but different categories. So on the business side, it's going to be internet, cable, and phone services. Interestingly enough, for the other Inc. cards, you do also get elevated value above that statement credit level of 1.1 cents per point, but for the same categories. To me, one of the big value props of the Chase system is that it does a pretty good job dealing with the ebbs and flows that typically come with life. You still have that upside if you want it, but you're not forced to do it. On a side note, if you do want to learn about Chase cards and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website, AskSebi.com and down below in the description box. If you are debating between the Chase Sapphire Preferred and the Reserve, we also have a calculator on there as well. Make sure the links are competitive, but otherwise it's a huge way to support the channel, so thank you guys in advance. Moving into a lightning round, let's start off with an elevated offer to the Chase IHG Premier card. Technically, it is a historic high offer of 140,000 points, plus one free night valued at up to 40,000 points after spending $3,000 in the first three months. There is a $99 annual fee, but the intro bonus covers that in the first year, and in the second year you have an anniversary certificate and also status and stuff, so you probably are going to get value and keep the card. Heads up, but Chase did end up changing the rules for the intro bonus. It's not available if you're a current card member of any IHG Rewards credit card. In the past, it wasn't the case, so if you had the old grandfathered card, you could still get this one, and that wasn't conflicting. The business cards are separate, so that's fine, but I don't want you guys to eat an unnecessary inquiry. Moving on, Chase has a bunch of spend bonuses for Q3 for groceries, gas, and also home improvement. These were for partner cards like Southwest, Bonvoy, and United, and you should have gotten an email. Speaking of gas, reminder that it's now Q3, so you can activate your 5x or 5% back categories for the Freedom and also the Freedom Flaps. So here you're going to earn 5x back and up to $1,500 in combined spend for each card for purchases at gas stations, car rental agencies, movie theaters, and select live entertainment. If you're someone that has a Hyatt card and you're looking to use your points, there's a pretty good deal. This is going to be for redemptions at Hyatt independent collection brands between July 5th and September 5th, and you do need to register. So this collection is Unbound, Destination, and JDV. Heads up, but there is a max of 30,000 points you can earn from this, so ideally you don't want to redeem more than 180,000 points. If you want 10 free stocks, Moomoo has a pretty good promotion. You're going to get 5 stocks when you sign up and 5 when you deposit any amount. This isn't some weird crypto thing, but it's a brokerage account that's protected under SIPC. So here you're covered up to $500,000 for your securities and $250,000 for your cash. In case you're wondering, they're also a registered broker dealer under FINRA since the beginning of 2018. 
Link down below if you want to check out Moomoo and support the channel and get 10 free stocks. Back to hotels, if you're someone that prefers Bonvoy instead of Hyatt, there is a pretty good transfer promotion right now for Chase where you're going to get 50% bonus points. In this case, 100,000 Chase points is going to be 150,000 Bonvoy. I'd say that points generally make sense for either aspirational YOLO style trips or for last minute business trips especially during conferences when there's a ton of people trying to go to the same city. Even three weeks ago, I ended up using about 40,000 points via certificates to redeem at a hotel that was charging and people were paying seven or $800. Please, please be extremely careful with this and have an actual use case before you transfer the points. Once you transfer the points over there, you can't transfer it back and you don't want those points for no reason. So map out where you wanna go and make sure that you're actually getting value. And number two, ideally make sure there's availability for that stay. If any of those are not true, then I'd reconsider. And if you don't get value, then probably just use pay yourself back or transfer over the Hyatt because you generally do get value. All right, so the last topic ends on the note of Bonvoy. The Chase Sapphire Reserve is getting Bonvoy gold status. Okay, before you get too excited, this is temporary, but I think it is pretty indicative of what's to come. Let's talk about what's actually happening for about 60 seconds first, and then we'll kind of speculate after that. You get three months of status by registering between July 1st and September 30th of 2022. In order to keep the status, you do need to book three paid stays during that status period. If you do that, then they extend gold status until February 2024. Okay, so why is this not that great? Number one is that there are other cards that just give you the status by default. Even within the Chase ecosystem, there is the Ritz-Carlton card that you can technically still product change to that gives you gold status. Number two, and I don't think this is a controversial opinion, is that gold status is just okay. It's not that great. I'd say that the main draw of gold status is that you get more points when you do pay the book. You get priority late checkout at 2 p.m., but it is subject to availability, and you also get room upgrades. I'd say that room upgrades, unless you get very lucky, are pretty passive, generally a higher floor, maybe a slightly bigger room, but typically not suites. If you want upgrades to suites, then you would need to have Bonvoy Platinum status, which might be coming in a new card. Actually, one other benefit, which I kind of feel like is a BS one, is internet access. Depending on the location of the chain and, I guess, policies of that hotel, they're going to give you basic access if you are a basic member. So even if you don't have silver, you have base internet. In order to get fast, usable internet for the purposes of someone like me, you'd need to have at least gold status or you need to pay out of pocket. Generally, it's something like seven or maybe eight dollars per day. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but I'd rather keep my nine dollars. OK, so the most interesting question or part of all of this is why? Why, after all of this time where the Sapphire Reserve has been around and status has been a weak spot, do we finally get status, even if it is just temporary? If you take a look at Justia back in March of 2022, Marriott filed for two new trademarks. One is the Bonvoy Bevy, and the other one is the Bonvoy Bountiful. I'd say that both of those words can generally be associated with extravagant taste. So initially, when I heard the word Bevy, I instantly thought of drink because that's kind of slang for drink, but it's actually not. So the technical term of Bevy is that it refers to a large group of people or things, oftentimes birds. So a Bevy of annoying content creators. Either way, think large, maybe large annual fee. Bountiful means bountiful, so high in quantity or abundance. Maybe it's a large quantity of dollars. I have regrets. Either way, both of those words make me think of excess and probably an annual fee in the $750 to $1,000 range. To account for this elevated annual fee and the fact that people do travel, I think it would come with something like platinum status, probably an 85K certificate, and then a bunch of other credits that they'll mix and match to make people happy. I think you guys know which camp I'm in. I'll happily pay that $1,000 if I'm getting $2,000 in tangible value. I'll happily take a coupon book if it's stuff that I'll use. So no, not a $2,000 discount for a SoulCycle bike. And yes, Bonvoy did split up their cards to two different families, but I think given the nature of everything going on and the storyline that's coming up, it wouldn't be a surprise to me if they each had their own set of cards. I think the credit card lore writers are pretty good, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a plot twist in Q4. Again, if you want to learn about cards, we have links on AskSavvy.com and also down below in the description box. If you made it to this point in the video, then leave a flying money emoji in the comments down below and I'll try to respond to it and also heart it. Flying money being for pay yourself back. My question for you is what do you think pay yourself back is going to be for Q4? I'm guessing it's going to be around normal everyday things, so probably holiday spending. Maybe back to school, but I feel like that's a bit tougher to do. Also, what are your thoughts on the whole Bonvoy thing? Do you like the bevy and the bountiful name or would you have picked a different B word? It's kind of funny how all of their cards abbreviate to BBC. All right, with that said, big favor, give this a thumbs up, consider subscribing, share this with a friend, but otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.